Before diving in, I'd like to say that TimeTech provided me with this SSD as a sample. They explicitly told me that they have no expectations for the content of a review or video containing the drive, giving me full freedom to cover what I want and how I want. With that said, let's dive into the TimeTech Gen 4 NVMe SSD and see how it stacks up to price competitors from more established brands. As we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to hit the like button and subscribe, so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Additionally, don't forget to leave a comment, especially if there's something I missed. I can't cover every aspect of an SSD in the relatively short duration of a video. I more so wanted to discuss some of the technical specifications and how they translate to the performance that I'm seeing. Without any further ado, let's dive into this drive and see how it stacks up. Starting off with what gives an NVMe SSD its performance characteristics. The controller on this drive is the Fizen E27T, a single-core ARM-based cost-optimized chip. Fizen also claims there's an additional 32-bit microcontroller in the chip to help with additional data processing. But generally speaking, most of the load on the drive is going to the single core found in the chip. Lacking a typical DRAM cache on this drive, it instead uses an implementation of the host memory bus system aka HMB, and it's a technology that has been very successful with the Samsung 980 series of solid-state drives. What this does is still utilize a cache for the controller, but it instead lives as a partition in your main system's DRAM, instead of as a dedicated chip on the drive itself. This has some overhead, as the controller is still having to communicate over PCIe to get the data, but in practice it's actually pretty effective, and has proven to allow for a lot of drives on the market to achieve lower hardware costs while maintaining high performance. The SSD on the PlayStation 5 functions this way, and it ultimately relies on having a strong controller to maintain high throughput, usually at the cost of power. The TimeTech SSD, when under benchmarking loads, draws just shy of 10 watts, which is normal when compared to price competitors such as the Western Digital Black SN770. When idling, things usually hang out at significantly under a single watt which is also not any higher or lower than other drives on the market. This model comes with a heatsink, so temperatures were never a problem, even without a dedicated fan blowing air over it. In terms of the NVMe configuration on this drive, it runs across four PCIe Gen 4 lanes, giving it a theoretical bandwidth ceiling of 8GB per second, which is superior to a Gen 3x4 connection which maxes out at 4GB per second. This is now the industry standard for Gen 4 drives, and ultimately is a wide and quick highway for data to travel across. This leads to the NAND configuration, which will determine the endurance of the drive. With 3D TLC NAND flash, the endurance of this drive is higher than QLC NAND, but is lower in performance and endurance when compared to MLC or SLC. All this means is that there are 3 bits stored per NAND cell. There is a computational overhead when reading and writing data to it, leading to its overall lower performance when compared to MLC, which sports 2 bits per cell, or SLC, which sports a single bit per cell. However, there's a huge trade-off, that being capacity. TLC is more expensive than QLC, but is significantly less expensive than MLC or SLC, meaning that you can get more storage per dollar with a drive sporting higher bits per storage cell. Typically, to get the best of both NAND types, Drives will utilize an unused portion of the drive as a cache with the NAND cells in SLC mode. Data can be quickly written to it and then encoded into whatever other format the drive uses at a later date, when it isn't being hammered with data. However, once a drive reaches a certain volume of data, less and less of the cells are available to function as an SLC cache, meaning it slows down as the controller has to encode then write the data on the fly, or decode when reading the data. This TimeTech drive presumably features this SLC caching technology, and as a result, its performance dips once the drive fills up. An easy way to avoid this is to not partition the entire drive, and leave some of it available. But even with a full format, the drive performs pretty well in terms of bandwidth and IOPS. It's also worth mentioning that the drive does feature error correcting technology to help it when it comes to maintaining data integrity. When it comes to the endurance of the NAND flash on the drive, it's rated for 600 terabytes written on the 1 terabyte model, or 1.5 million hours of mean time before failure. This is identical to the Samsung 980 and 990 Pros, 
So you aren't sacrificing longevity by picking up one of these time tech drives, when compared to Samsung at least. There's also a 3 year warranty, which remains competitive with Samsung and the warranty they provide. The operating temperature range for the controller on this drive is rated from 0 to 70 Celsius, which is actually tighter than some other controllers on the market. I suspect this is the case so that the drive can maintain high throughput on its relatively narrow pipeline. Since this drive comes with a heatsink, temperatures were literally never a problem but it may be worth using some sort of heatsink on the flavor of this drive shipping without a heatsink. In general, the specs of this drive are cost-optimized while striving to deliver high performance. With a marketed sequential read speed of 7400 megabytes a second and a sequential write speed of 6100 megabytes per second, this drive should utilize the controller to the fullest, making more sense as to why the drive ships with the heatsink. Starting off with IOP throughput. The controller on this drive manages over 481k IOPS when it comes to random reads and over 381k IOPS when it comes to random writes in my testing. This isn't as high as the Fizon white paper claims the E27T supports, and when compared to the Western Digital Black SN770, it falls behind by under 26% in random reads, with the gap shrinking to just over 19% in random writes. The SN770 is probably one of the closer drives in terms of price point even though it is about $10 more than the time tech drive I've got here. When it comes to sequential read and write bandwidth, which is important when reading non-fragmented data, such as images, models, or other game assets, the time tech drive comes ahead of the SN770, delivering over 6300 megabytes a second of read at a queue depth of 32, and over 5300 megabytes a second of write at the same queue depth. Lowering the queue depth to something a bit more reasonable, in this case just 8, and the performance of the drive jumps up quite a bit, with over 7,000 megabytes a second of sequential read and over 6,000 megabytes a second of sequential writes. Random 4K writes at this queue depth are a bit of a tough spot on this, and really any solid state drive, with the drive offering just over 621 megabytes per second of random 4K write bandwidth. For context, the SN770 offers just under 367 megabytes a second in the random 4K write test. In fact, the drive that provides the most similar random 4K write performance that I own is the Samsung 970 EVO, which is a PCIe Gen 3 drive, able to achieve just over 576 megabytes a second in the random 4K write test. Even when filling up the drive, performance was maintained up until it was over 90% full. Once it reached about 840 gigs of usage, performance started to dip to around 6000 megabytes a second of sequential read performance but the sequential write performance fell off a cliff, achieving barely 1000 megabytes a second at a queue depth of 8. This performance is pretty normal for NVMe drives that are full of data, and it goes back to the SLC caching that we discussed earlier in this video. Because the cells are actually in use, they can't be repurposed as an SLC cache, and although having over 800 gigabytes of pretty quick storage is plenty, it's pretty common practice to not partition the whole thing to avoid this sort of performance degradation. When it comes to solid state storage technology, the overall price per gigabyte for the end user has fallen significantly over the past five years. What I originally bought for $150 in 2020 can now be had for $40 in mid-2024, if that gives you any idea how much SSD prices have fallen. As a result, there are now plenty of performant and relatively inexpensive Gen 3 and 4 drives available on the market. This happens to be one of those Gen 4 drives, being $75 for the 1TB model. Other modern drives of comparable speeds and capacities are the Western Digital Black SN770, which is about $15 more than the TimeTech drive, and the Samsung 990 Pro, which also comes in at about $25 more expensive for the 1TB flavor. I think that the TimeTech drive, while it isn't as beefy controller-wise as other more expensive solutions, still performs excellently, which makes it really easy to recommend for the price. The only concern I have is that on the PDF it says at the bottom in grey text, note we reserve the right to modify product specifications without prior notice. This is an issue we've been seeing on some SSDs over the past couple of years, where a drive is launched with one set of specs then quietly changed behind the scenes to further optimize cost. This usually comes with a performance hit, so if TimeTech ends up changing the specs of this drive after reviews are made, then try to be aware of it so that you can adjust your purchasing behavior accordingly. I don't think TimeTech are going to do this, as I haven't seen them do it thus far on any of their products, but if they do do it, then they'll put the difference somewhere, whether it's a different product number or a variation on an existing SKU. 
Just pay attention to those numbers and see if they're consistent with the numbers here. I've got the part numbers on screen for both the 1 and 2 terabyte models. And then just do some surface level research to see what about the specs have been adjusted. But in the configuration shipped to me, the performance on offer is pretty impressive for the price that it's offered for. It's definitely more of an investment over a cheaper Gen 3 drive, but if you're on a modern platform such as AM4, LGA1200, 11th Gen or newer, or AM5, then the improved transfer speeds and latency found on this drive would reinvigorate your system when it comes to boot and program load times. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what you guys think about this TimeTech Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Would you consider purchasing one, or would you rather go with something a bit cheaper? That's all I really have to say on the matter. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.